Hi guys, I'm answering all of your questions in this one, some from the video that I released a couple days ago on my main channel and some other ones that I've snuck through through social media. So let's get right to it. Uh, first question, um, why did you have a little bit of wobble in your pellets in the last video? And the answer, The answer is that I was experimenting. So I was shooting a bunch of pellets that I had painted. See that? The skirt is what I painted, the inside of the skirt. Well, I used the FX 25 caliber tray, placed all the pellets in there and then lightly spray painted it. But the seal, I don't think was tight enough on them. So on a couple pellets, you get this kind of thing. And you can see that some of that paint had crept along the sides and that undoubtedly had an impact on the, the you know, wobbliness of the pellets. I compared it to regular ones and uh, after I was all done shooting that day as the sun was setting and without a doubt the regular ones were you know all stacking in a hole at 50 yards and these you get mm, three out of four in, 50, in one hole and then one about an inch off so yeah some of the wobbliness was caused by that. I'm still working on that. I don't know if it's really worth it or not, trying different paints, high visibility, reflective, blah, 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 trying to get a better visual of the pellet in flight, especially in a lot of brush and tree limbs and that kind of stuff where these gray pellets just kind of disappear through there. I'm trying to get something to show up better in there. If you got an idea, put it down below and I'm, I'll be grateful for it. Next question, a lot of missed shots, Ted. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, that was a rustiness, 100% rustiness. Um, most of the work I've been doing lately has been target shooting, that kind of stuff. It hasn't been trying to work, you know, on, on my gun here, <laughs> on my impact. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do to, for filming. I got to get this one going. I got to get this one going. I got to get everything in focus. I got to dial to this. Um, there's quite a bit to do. And while my shooting has been, you know, good over the last six months, I haven't been filming and shooting. And so my rustiness and a lot of those missed shots was me being a little too hasty. The wheel on top of the gun. Actually, why don't I just lower that camera so you can actually see me better. <laughs> That's better. The wheel on top of my scope here. Uh, all this is, is a parallax adjustment wheel. This is a Leapers one. I bought it for a, one of my first scopes I ever owned. And it basically is this. Uh, there's your scope. There's your top right there. Uh, this one in particular was uh, milled out for uh, Titan, but the Titan has a bigger knob on top, so I just got some perfectly sized rubber bands around there. I'd take it off, but come on, it's, it's on there perfect right now, and then I got a fish. So, so I put the rubber bands on the turret knob itself. Tight rubber band, tight rubber band, it's all just kind of sandwiched in there, so just rubberized friction allows that. Why pellets? Why aren't you shooting slugs? Well, yeah, I got the... Uh, 25 knockouts and 25 hybrids. Both of them do pretty well out of this gun. The answer is right there. Look how many of the freaking pal Can you see that? I'm gonna turn that camera. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of 25 caliber pellets that need to be shot. So I got thousands of dollars worth. Remember that order for all those 25 caliber? That was 2015 and I found a, what I thought was a magic batch. And so I just bought up uh, $2,000 worth of ammunition. <laughs> That order right there probably bumped JSB stock by a couple points. <laughs> Stop talking politics. That's not really a question. <laughs> but uh, in my defense, I wasn't talking politics. I was talking about us as Americans and actually kind of the world as a whole with respect to getting along with each other. I find it decidedly frustrating when I hear someone talk about wanting to remove or just evaporate half the population. They all need to be sent off here or all need to be shot in the head. So many people are so eager to like go full Thanos on the entire population. And what I don't think anyone realizes that makes these statements is just how much worse your life would be if you actually got your wish. Every single person watching me right now has someone in their life that adds value to their life that doesn't agree with them politically. And when I see people no longer think of other humans as human, but as a obstacle, yeah, I speak up. That was my choice and if I lose subscribers for it, so be it. Oh yeah, um, and someone caught a glimpse of this the other day. I am one of the first people ugh, in the US, I think, 
to own one of these. This is a pard. And uh, and what this is, is it's a, I guess, a European version of the, what is it, the MTN that they make in the US? It's an IR scope. Now, I really can't talk about the pard without first talking about the night sight. So, I, night sight was kind of the original that took infrared and put it to a scope. And this is a kit from night sight that I used a few times, but the things I recorded were way too graphic. I hit a couple coyotes. Uh, the coyotes went down hard instantly, but then they did the whole kicking around. It was a, it was, I put it up to YouTube, I gave it to my agent and said, is this doable? And they said, you're gonna get banned. So I never released that video and I feel kind of guilty. That's why I'm bringing this out. Night Sight makes really, really good stuff. Um, it just never fit what I was doing. We can't hunt, like hunt, hunt at night. Like the UK can. Uh, you shoot a rabbit at night and uh, unless it's in a, for a very, very good reason that you've approved with your local conservation warden, it's gonna be a no-no. This was a lot of stuff to lug around and get it all put in place. And you can see that I got enough cameras to deal with already. And then there was more on top of this one. So um, in short, I never got around to using the night sight and they're probably watching this right now pretty annoyed with me and I wouldn't blame them for that. Uh, if you guys want it back, I will send it back um, on, on my cost. My point is tip of the hat to these guys because the technology that went into these and still goes into these, Night State still makes their stuff. And for uh, what they call, I think they say the working man's night vision, very inexpensive um, compared to a lot of other options out there. You can get Night Sight set up for under 500 bucks, I think. The PARD on top of here basically takes all of this stuff and puts it into a bundle that works jack of all trades and master of none. Uh, this allows you to use your current scope. You can attach night sight to your scope and use your scope to shoot. Uh, the PARD, just like the MTNs, there's about five or ten reticles to choose from. I don't really like any of them in here. I usually just use a, a straight duplex cross. It will record. It's only 30 frames per second. Um, and the one thing that's horrible about this is that it doesn't come with something to use for adjustment. So if you know anything about these things, it's nothing more than a video camera with an infrared beam on here, and there's a laser rangefinder on here too, but let's not talk about that. That's a great option, but I don't wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about the fact that this is just a camera, and you're basically shooting using a camera. And imagine that you just had like your own uh, camcorder, you plopped it down here and you took your knife and etched on the glass <laughs> across there. I mean, if you could dial that camera to that crosshair, that's, that's a scope, basically. So um, you need to have one of these. See it on there? It's an adjustable rail. And this one is a dang good one. I got it off of Amazon. Uh, what's the company on this? Looks like, uh, looks like I don't know. There, it's a, it's a Chinese made part, I'm almost certain, because I've seen it pop up under several different names. Should come in at about 130 bucks, something like that. Without this, this is dang near worthless, because you have to shim it to get it close. And I used everything from staples to little slits of aluminum to anything I could to get it close. And I did get it close, but man, was it clumsy and just plain ridiculous. You can move the crosshair inside this, but if your point of impact is in the lower corner of the view screen, you're using a crosshair down here. This is all wasted space then, and you're constantly just focusing on this little tiny corner where the crosshair is. That sucks. If you have one of these adjustable rails on here, you can completely forget about moving the crosshair in here. And I have gotten the crosshairs that come, you know, centered per the default on the part. I've got them exactly to my point of impact at 50 yards using just this. On one side, you got right and left. And on the other side, you got up and down. We're at 50 yards away. I'm on the, uh, the middle right target at 50 yards. You won't see the crosshairs. I can see the crosshairs, but you can't. But you can see the bullet travel. So here it goes. You see that? Here, let me digital zoom it for you. See, there's my three shots right there. I'll use digital zoom for these other three shots. So there you go, huh? 50 yards. This is the Wildcat shooting Hades at 950 feet per second. 
Go, go, turn on. One more thing. Ah, the wobbly barrel. People were seeing my barrel flexing a lot in that last video. I want to show you, it actually wasn't the barrel. What it was, was this stick that I have on here. And see how I extend that? I extend that, and then when, it's pretty rigid, but as I was moving, this thing would bounce. And when this would bounce, it gave the illusion that this was actually moving. Go back and watch it again. Trust me on this. This, this barrel wasn't wiggling and shaking. It was this thing. I'll make sure to address that. I, I try to get this as rigid as possible, but you know, what are you gonna do? You have this big long extender arm out there. So that is what you were seeing. You were seeing that. Finally, will you be shooting slugs in the future? Yes, of course I will. I'll be shooting slugs. I'm not a pellet snob or a slug snob. I'm just a shooting guy. And uh, I have all this to get through and I have lots of other stuff to use too. So yeah, just mixing it up is all. So I think that covers it. We're done. Goodbye.